looking to tension. kind of get, yeah, a little <laughs> tension. You know, they're trying, they're trying, they they want to say what's up. They want to say what's up. <laughs> okay, I think well, Xset doesn't like to lose is the most important thing. Xset does not like to lose, and uh, I think they're going to be looking to kind of get revenge, so to speak, in a matchup like this. But it's kind of an interesting blind pick we have here. Raikou, Waz, and Chaz are actually locking in the Windwalker, Fire Mage, uh, Mistweaver. And we've seen a lot of teams sort of implement that Windwalker monk uh, in favor of the Rogue against uh, the Mage Lock. This is really interesting. We saw even Mystery Org in North America try this matchup into Cloud9. So let's see how it plays out here in Europe between Xset and Diabolus. Wasn't anticipating a Mistweaver pick in the current meta, but Diabolus, they're definitely phenomenal at this Mage Lock Paladin. I would put them as an aggressive standing Mage Lock Paladin. Gelu already starting the fight right in enemy territory, but gets shut down for a moment and not able to find crowd control on Chaz. They still try and burst Raikou, but Temporal Shield soaks all of the hits. Clyde now gets stunned up. They're pushing on to Gelu. Gelu gets ready. Temporal time perfectly, healing himself back to full. Raikou's still the target. Chaz in position, though, stabilizing. Gelu falls behind as Clyde is crowd controlled. Gelu takes control of Waz for a moment. Dragon Smith into Polymorph. Team's looking evenly matched. Chaz repositioning in the back line. It's all about Chaz. He needs to stay away from Clyde and that Hammer of Justice. Otherwise, he's going to be locked down in crowd control for some time. Yeah, and so far, uh, both setups were kind of shut down. Both of these mages are doing a great job, but Blessing of Protection coming out here onto Gelu. Raik is going for the Ring of Frost. He gets Blink Counterspell there. Another shutdown there by the team of Diablos. Very nice, but Gelu still on the back foot here. Gets a, uh, finally a full ship here onto Clyde, but nice Vitality Conduit uh, by Clyde before he got that sheep. So Gelu should be kind of okay here. While he's trying to push through the Temporal Shield, but he is not going to find enough damage to proc that. And now Gelu should be completely fine here, throwing out a few greater Pyroblasts onto us, trying to push him out of the open. And once again, the Ablos, they respond nicely to the setup. They hang on, and now they're looking to push in here and get aggressive. Yeah, and I like the build Gelu's playing. Definitely a little dangerous. He's playing full Expedient, so playing max haste, and that's why his greater Pyroblasts, his Polymorphs, the Ring of Frost are just so quick but that also makes him a really easy target for Waz and Raikou to go after. So uh, I think in this matchup, Gel is going to have to play positionally, really, really defensive, and make sure he's kind of staying out of the fight, because if he stays in too long, then he get caught in the leg sweeps, Waz going to be able to burst him down. We already saw how close they got to proccing Cauterize off that last dress to Gath Trinket, and that will be the scariest moment in the uh, in the game. Or Gelu Combustion gets ripped off. Who are they going after? A little bit of pressure here on the Waz right now. He gets caught with a Dragon's Breath, but a Fortifying Brew seems to be okay. And uh, with a Transcendence behind the pillar. And that really is the difficult thing about going after a Windwalker Monk. They're just so mobile with Transcendence, with Touch of Karma, Diffuse Magic, lots of defensive options to rotate through. And I think as long as Waz plays careful, he should be relatively safe in this match. And the, the main win condition here is likely killing Waz over Xenium. That's why we see Gelu repositioned so far in the back starting area, trying to bait Waz out in the open and now blinking back towards center field, finding a greater Pyroblast with the Chaos Bolts. Gelu going to use the Demonic Gateway to escape to safety as Clyde and Mercy look to just pull back and wait for their moments. They're just going to be attacking Waz for now. Raikus is loading up Fireball after Fireball, likely trying to reset that combustion, but gets feared away. Waz stunned up on his touch of death. Waz would like to get a big hit here onto Gelu, but Gelu temporal shields right before the hit. Now Raikus suddenly getting blasted. His temporal perfectly timed. The defensive plays from both of these mages is definitely top tier, as you would expect from the top four of Europe. Excellent stuff here coming out of these mages, Raikou. So using his combustion here, trying to get some damage, but I do believe it was clipped at and cancelled right away by Gelu. Full fear onto Chaz. Don't think they have any follow up crime control. Gelu doesn't get the Dragon's Breath there. He gets shut down now with the interrupts, but nice sacrifice coming out of Clyde. He's going to keep Gelu nice and topped here. And Clyde is, of course, running some of those ineffable truths. So uh, we're going to take a look at that sack cooldown a little bit later. I'm sure we'll see it just power down at some point when that corruption procs. Yeah, still just trying to lob out some uh, some big uh, greater pirates here, but so far no team really having a, a big advantage. Uh, Raikou's playing full versatility on that mage, so he's not going to have any haste, but he's going to be an extremely durable target, and he's going to just be trying to kill people with that combustion, but now Arrow just is onto Waz, forcing out the life cocoon from Chaz right there, and now once again Exit looking to get aggressive here, paralyzed onto Clyde. Do we have any follow-up? Chaz doesn't have the leg sweep for a couple of more seconds, Unfortunately, they couldn't get any more follow-up there. Why is it getting feared? And it looks like Diablos is in control once again. 
Yeah, definitely. Good control of the match. Full polymorph right now onto Chaz. Raikou and Afira as well. And Waz has to be a little bit careful, but he's not really respecting the damage too much. Actually making a swap over here onto Raikou, the main focus of the match. But like you said, Zico, I mean, this guy, he's going to be using a lot of versatility. And actually turning around the pressure onto Gelu with a polymorph onto Clyde. Let's see if Gelu can hold on using Gateway once again. Getting one greater power blast on Raikou. Getting two greater power blasts on Raikou. Raikou has to be a little bit careful. I mean... The one nice thing about Xset's composition is they have a lot of healing, a lot of passive healing as well, with the renewing mists of the Mistweaver Monk, the Serpent Jade statue, but I think it becomes really scary as Dampton gets higher. All of a sudden, Chaz is gonna have to open up his tree a lot more and uh, spam out those soothing mists. And once that happens, I think that's when Gelu and Mercy are really gonna be able to generate kind of a lot of pressure and momentum in the match, as long as they can hold on. Oh, two polymorphs out at the same time here. Nice nether ward by Mercy, locking the entirety of Xset down, but not finding a kill onto Waz and only a Ford Brew. Kind of a devastating result for such a power play. But now, five and a half minutes in and 3% dampening. Things are going to get heated here between these two teams in round run, round one of Europe's championship. Jazz stunned up, Waz the target once again. He's pushing forward though, he's got a touch of death rolling. He paralyzes Clyde, he's pushing for the cauterize. Fist of Fury flying and Gelug respects the burst damage of Waz, trading out Ice Block. And normally you want to trade the Paladin cooldowns and allow Ineffable Truth to reset them. So an Ice Block is a very important cooldown for Xset to get at this point in the game. Gelu is running full Expedient. He's a very fast casted mage, but he can definitely get eradicated if he's not careful. Oh, Gelu getting a sheep on the chest, but he gets counterspell on the Greater Pyro. He gets Dragon's Breath on the Resheep. He still gets it though due to that haste, but Raikou sneaks in a Polymorph out of his own, and now Gelu is in big trouble here. Combustion is rolling. Chance is there for the Leg Sweep as well. Clyde, Bubble, Sacrifice. Gelu procs the uh, nice uh, cauterize there as well. So, big win here for Exet. They are already uh, kind of in a checkmate position here against Diablos. They just need one more Crack Control onto Clyde into one more setup onto Gelu if they can do it cleanly enough. If they can get a greater pyroblast or a drastigath, they have enough damage, maybe with a combustion, they could easily take down this mage in the next couple of minutes here, Ben. Well, I think it's very possible. That was a drastigath, full polymorph now on a Chaz. They're going after Raikou, but he's just going to be using line of sight, avoiding damage, and getting the healing from the statue. So I think Raikou should be okay. He's in the middle of the map right now. Gets caught into a mortal coil. Polymorph spam coming in. Chaz, can he connect? Looking for some soothing mist. If he gets the enveloping, it looks like he did. Raikou will be stable, and now once again, it's going to be Gelu who's in trouble. Actually, Raikou getting interrupted still in midfield. His positioning is not working out for Raikou right now. He's getting bullied by Mercy, taking huge hits from Gelu. 14% dampening in the game. If we look at mana, Chaz is actually falling a little bit behind. Unlikely he's going to be able to drink, but it might not matter. Gelu's getting down low, 20% health. Clyde able to connect to heal, and with the Demonic Gateway, Gelu is able to reposition, but the pressure from Xset is quite immense in this game. I mean, I think this is the matchup Xset wanted to get. They're in a huge lead, only at 16% dampening in game number one. If they win the blind pick, they will have the match advantage for the rest of the series, which is very important for a team like Xset that has such a wide range of compositions. This entire series could just pivot off the first game. Gelu sets up for big damage over onto Waz, but once again, Fort brews all of it, totally negating it. Waz is pushing forward. He's got touch of death. Clyde is blessing a protection as the answer. Will he be able to make the trade in time? Mercy getting controlled up here by Raikou. Now Raikou getting controlled up by Gelu. Waz and Afir on his touch of death and Blessing and Protection is going to stabilize but was the Blessing and Protection really needed? Waz was feared, not able to connect any damage. Clyde's going to be praying to Nazoth right now to reset that in the immediate future. Thankfully for himself, he does have Sacrifice coming up in about two more seconds but if he's crowd controlled, he may not be able to access it. Double leg sweep. Beautiful punish by Waz. They're pushing for the kill onto Gelu. Do they have the damage to do so? Mercy intercepts with a double infernal. Clyde finally gets out of crowd controls. Stay Stabilizing Gelo with the sacrifice. They could switch to Clyde. No Divine Shield for 12. They're not going to look for that opportunity. Just playing it slow and steady. Gelo's Ice Block comes up in about a minute from now. If he can stall to that point, he could take it into the deep dampening stages where his composition does start to edge out its advantage. But a minute with Waz chasing you down is going to be tough. Uh, let's see if he can do it. Right now, they're going for another push here. Mercy in a Dragon's Breath into the Polymorph. He gets Counterspell there onto Raikou. Full Fear 
Mercy is just trying to get some counter pressure, trying to stop this setup in its tracks. Yellow looking for some counter aggression here with the Polymorph, but he can't find it right now. Uh, Chaz is doing a great job at his positioning, just line of sighting, avoiding CC. But still, we got about 30 more seconds here where they potentially could take Yellow down, despite the fact that Clyde has bubble. If he doesn't have a big heal to go with that bubble, they could take him down. But that window is ever so close to just being gone 15 more seconds and it looks like Raikou is gonna go back to the pillar Gelo is gonna reposition again across the map and it looks like they've bought themselves enough time here to get Gelo's ice block back up let's see they're going for the push here now mm, Chaz two gets seconds paralyzed. here we go Ooh. one second left he gets the bubble into the divine second how did he have sacrifice again his off must have blessed Clyde's hands <laughs> right there off. and giving him do, do, another sack <laughs> do, you, do you really need to ask how now Raikou is actually in some trouble Polymorph on Chaz, Raikou, he's actually pushing forward to slow down the damage, slow down the crowd control, but he gets caught into a Dragon's Breath. This is the Cauterize and the Life Cocoon. Great job there by Diabolus. And now things are getting a little bit more unstable here for Chaz. The Mist Weaver healing, and you know, it's becoming a little bit more difficult. And uh, Diabolus is looking like they're doing quite well in this position. Gelu with his Ice Block, but keep in mind, we do have the Drastic available. Definitely a scary moment here for Gelu. Could get taken down quite quickly if he's not careful. Uh, good crowd control coming in. Gelu looking for a greater power blast again. Polymorph onto Waz. And let's see if Waz is going to be able to actually reconnect. There's good control coming in from Raikou. Clyde actually gets caught into a Polymorph. And now it's going to be Gelu who has to use his Ice Block more than likely. We'll see. He's getting low yep. and will respect the trade. And that is a great spot for Xset to be in. Now there's no bubble. There's no sacrifice. There's no trinket. Gelu, no cauterize for another 30 seconds. No Ice Block. Xset has everything they need to close out this game. So basically, all Xset need to do right now is not die to Mercy's Dark Soul and Infernal, which are available. And they have Ice Block to trade. They have Diffuse Magic. So Xset are in a lead in this position. They would have to throw, I think, at this specific moment. They just need to get ready for it. And Mercy is playing this with a lot of tactics, holding on to the Dark Soul, waiting until Xset overcommits, and then tries to make them trip on the finish line. So let's see if that patience will pay off for Mercy. He's definitely going to have to carry the team in these final moments with those cooldowns. And Chaz is moving in, but he gets intercepted by Gelu. Beautiful interception. Gelu's in a bop. He's channeling out Greater Pyros. They're pushing for the block on the counter push. Huge hit over onto Raikou. Life Cocoon trades here from Chaz. He's out of crowd control. He's pushing still on top of Clyde, but now Chaz gets intercepted by a fear. Clyde's positioning is great here towards what could be the final moments of game number one. Gelu in a paralyzed. Waz desperately trying to connect. His touch of death not getting too much value. Clyde still has sacrifice available. Potentially need to trade it. He trades it preemptively on the legs sweep beautiful timing by Clyde here mana basically exactly even at 42 percent dampening and it's still anyone's match yeah and Raikou now he's getting blasted he's gonna have to ice block there nice crowd control there on the chest they got the sheep they got the chaos bolt Raikou just had to respect that and they still have that dark soul that Sid mentioned Mercy now looking to break up the CC chain here trying to get some defensive fears onto Waz trying to get some crowd pressure here we go big damage with the dark soul two chaos bolts onto Waz there's the touch of karma no blessing or protection to remove it though and Waz is getting sheeped up on it Mercy still has that Dark Soul rolling. If he can get one Chaos Bolt onto Raikou, it could be lights out for him, but it doesn't look like he's going to be able to find it right now. They're just shutting down the CC chain here. Gelu just with defensive polymorphs onto the DPS. Clyde and Gelu, every single time, they're just trying to run back. Anytime Chaz is pushing in to get a crowd control, while well, Clyde is just swapping his side of the map, and they're doing a great job so far buying time for the ineffable Ooh. truth to proc, but Mercy seems like the target of choice now. Yeah, uh, uh, Waz has a secret, and that secret is Tiger Eye Brew. He's just been holding on to it the entire game, not going after Mercy. But now, that 50% dampening, I think this Warlock is going to be the new target, like you said. Gelu, you know, he's got his cauterized Ice Blocks rotating back up. He's got a lot of kiting, a lot of mobility, but Mercy, a not so mobile target. And I think for Raikou and Waz, if they can just pummel Mercy for the rest of the game, it's going to be really difficult. The scary thing is, though, Gelu with so much haste oh. is going to be able to punish. Hammer of Justice on Waz. He's got that diffuse magic. Is he going to greet it? He manages to get out of line of sight behind the pillar. Mercy's going to be pushing in. Can he get any crowd control? Chaz with his Thunder Focus T getting big heals on Waz, but at 52% dampening, really struggling to top off. And I mean, you can go after Mercy, but at this point, Gelu is really punishing with his damage. 
Oh, Chaz trying to go in for a roll, clips the side of the pillar here, and Exeter pin, Mercy's pushing forward, lobbing out Chaos Bolts, trying to get on top of Chaz, but he's being punished by Raikou. Waz pushing forward, gets feared off into the distance. Mana's not good for Clyde, he's actually co almost completely tapped at this point, he's gonna have to rely on his cooldowns, but he's got so many. Pretty life cocoon by Chaz, Gelu's Dragon's Breath secured, but the cocoon is protecting Raikou for now. Nice read on his part, they got the wait, Touch of Death is rolling, what's gonna be the answer? Do they just trade the sacrifice here? Mercy's about to take a huge hit, Clyde's crowd control, Divine Shield sacrifice immediately realizing that touch of death momentum Clyde would not be able to recover from it at 56% dampening but that was the massive cooldown trade will Mercy survive he still has Dark Soul in his back pocket still has an Infernal in his back pocket that's a big threat Xset they're hesitant Chaz and Raikou are pretty far in the back line. Waz is overextended. Chaz gets crowd controlled. Big push by Gelu here. Raikou retreats. Waz tanks the hits, but can he tank an Infernal at 60% dampening? Karma trades out. Now Clyde and Apolly. Raikou can't help out Waz. He's too low on health. Chaz is on a fear. Look at how far apart they're split up right now. 15 seconds away from a Cauterize. Raikou blinks back. Dragon's Breath's Gelu. Mercy's moving into line to finish off Raikou, but he may just get taken down by Gelu. He's polymorphing to 1%, but it's not enough to hold on. Waz is trying to push for the counter kill. Dispelled instantly. Looking to reconnect but a blessing of protection will deny his connection diabolus drag it out into dampening and take game one and they didn't even need mecha now <laughs> <laughs> all right well game one victory for diabolus here against x set for the first match of the day last time we saw these two teams play against each other in the round robin it was diabolus that took home the victory. How do we feel about Xset's comp choice there? They they decided to go with the Mistweaver with with, Wa or with the Windwalker, excuse me, with Waz on the Windwalker. Do we feel like that just wasn't the right option here, Ben? Uh, it doesn't feel like a bad option. Honestly, they had a lot of pressure throughout the match. I mean, at this point, it was just a positional error. Uh, yeah, at 60% dampening, these kind of mistakes, it's really difficult to recover. Raikou wanted a zig and Waz wanted a zag and they just got split up and unfortunately they just fell completely apart and that's what happens against a team that's well coordinated like Diabolus that's playing Mage Lock. If you do mess up your position, you will get punished, you will get crowd control, they'll be able to hit multiple targets and uh, at that point that's when the game really got unstable. But I, th I feel like there is things Xset can do. I do like the composition that they're bringing but one thing we've seen uh, some of the North American teams, particularly Jamili, experiment with a little bit is the greater power blast. So, so basically, as a fire mage, when you're playing into mage lock, if you're playing heavy versatility, a lot of the time what happens is you end up getting bullied. You don't have as much haste, so your polymorphs go off after your, you know, uh, after fears and polymorphs and you get interrupted really easily and it's it, it becomes really, really difficult to get off the damage you need. But we've seen some mages actually go with full haste g -Pi build um, and I think that's something Raikou might be able to do in a matchup like this, and it might give their team a bit more of an edge. So, Zico and Supati, then do, do you want to see them continue this this comp here on the side of Xset from game one? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, it depends a little bit on uh, the map pick as well, but I, I think so. I think you play it until you are forced off of it. Uh, the big question is, if we go to a small map, are we going to see a Frost Mage? Or are we going to see a Fire Mage? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. All right, well, it is going to be Xset's map choice here pretty soon. They did just lose that last game. And if we know the draft process, it's loser it picks map. And then Di Diabolus will respond with their composition choice. And at this point, Soup Tease, I don't really see uh, them switching off their comp. What do you think? I think the Mage Lock is a solid pick, even on, on the smaller maps. I think it would be Xset that's more likely to change. Maybe a rogue mage on a small map, um, and they can play more aggressive. And it looks like Black Rook Hold is locked in, so it's it's still somewhat neutral. I like this map as like a counter a counter wizard because there's always a place to line a sight. You can use the ramp next to the crow statue or the crow statue in the center. Three rooms off to the side on the walls, so you always have an immediate place to retreat. So this would be a great map for the double monk if they want to use that with transcendence. It looked good, and they were they were just so close to closing the game out multiple times, but. Ineffable Truth on the Holy Paladin is just going to be procking, and they almost always had an answer. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see the same matchup uh, here on Black Rook. Yeah, I mean, people when they talk about Waz, they always talk about what a strong rogue he is. But I just feel like also you look, look at him on the Windwalker. I mean, they're playing at this level here in the finals, so that must say that he's feeling super confident on that class. And I just feel like that is just shows exactly how powerful and how valuable of a player he is on X set, Ben. 
Uh, I mean, there really is no question. Waz, a bit of a wonder boy uh, when it comes to playing melee classes. So definitely can play that Windwalker at an extremely high level. And I think the reason why we're seeing him play Windwalker is I just think as the season has gone on, as uh, versatility has gotten higher and corruption has gotten higher, Rogues kind of, I won't say they fell off because they're still extremely good, but I would say Windwalkers kind of overthrew them as the best melee, um, just because they can take advantage of full versatility and empowers their damage quite a bit. Whereas for Rogues, they kind of go more in favor of gushing, which makes them uh, a lot more of a squishy target. And I think in this particular matchup, a rogue gets bullied uh, a little bit more by the mage lock. So that's why we're seeing him lock in the Windwalker Monk. And uh, I do think it's a good option. I would like to see Xset experiment with uh, Hasted Greater Power Blast on Raikou. And I think they can play it in a manner where Raikou literally just sits back. You, you have Waz go in as kind of a bruiser. He soaks up the damage and does as much damage as he can to Mercy and Gelu, where Raikou just sits back and just greater power blast over and over and over and over and then eventually you can go in for a blink really fast polymorph then kind of turn the game on its head but uh, i think that would be one adjustment i'd like to see but we'll see if they end up doing it um or if the smaller map is going to be enough for them to get the crowd control they need because gelu i will say his position was really good in that last game he was always dragging x set across the map and then gating away so just forcing chaz waz raikou to cross the map which allows mercy to just do as much damage much crowd control as he basically wants in the match and i think that was a, a crucial element of their victory is that positioning on diabolus that you just described then is that easily repeatable here in blackrock or are we going to see a little bit different tactics here well it's a smaller map so definitely going to be uh, a lot more difficult but i, I still i feel like diabolus they're going to be up for the up for the task, up for the challenge. Maybe Gelu will end up using even more versatility in this match. So mixing up his gear a little bit, putting on a little bit more durability as it is going to be uh, a lot more challenging for him, for, for him to actually create that kind of space he needs to survive. Um, because I think if Waz and Raikou have enough uptime on him, he will eventually fall. So for Gelu, it's all about just running and avoiding and creating as much space as possible, which is going to be a lot more difficult on this match. All right, we'll see if they can pull it off, win a game number two, put themselves on match point, or is Xset gonna tie it up for game number two? I mean, I think if there was a map for Xset's composition to win, it would be Black Rook hold. So th this is the best case scenario for them. If they go do down two points and have to reverse sweep, uh, that is going to be really tough. They're going to have to do it on Tolveron. They're going to have to do it on Ashamane. So they really can't afford a loss uh, at this point. They're just waiting up in the room, posted up in the starting area. And I think Xset, maybe they do want to try and drag it to Dampening with that Tiger Eye Brew kill in the Warlock. They're moving out now towards center pillar. Waz takes the ramp, repositions his port. Chaz still hangs in the far back line, not wanting to overextend for Polymorphs. Now they reposition forward as a unit. I love that they're moving as a triangle together. Clyde in the back line of his team as well, getting ready for the engagement. The dangerous part here for Waz is in melee DPS, so he has to go out in the open and look what happens. He gets speared into the distance. He's trying to charge in, but now he's polymorphed. Raikou's just lobbing up fireballs, waiting for Waz to get out of crowd control. They punish the dispel with a hammer of justice, double shadow fury. But no follow-up, that Ring of Frost just a second too late by Gelu. Chaz avoids it, Waz now getting on target. Gelu trades Temporal Shield, but it was no cooldown, so getting Temporal out of the way, baiting it, now going for a stun lock. Pre-Vitality Conduit, but is it enough? It's a huge swing of damage, and it looks like it is, with the peels from Mercy with Fear and Mortal Coil stalling out that advance. You can tell that both teams are just so prepared to deny each other every time they make an advance. Yeah, and uh, much like the last game, Mercy is just chilling, holding his cooldowns for as long as possible here. Ooh, actually a lot of damage here onto Gallo. Did he have anything? Ooh, we Ooh, blinked he the, we got the, the dress. No, he uh -huh. got the caught. He almost blinked the dress. If he blinked the dress there, he would have still had car rides. Gallo, just a tiny split second too late there, but Waz as well with the excellent pressure right there, netting them a five minute cooldown already. They get a full sheep here onto Clyde. No preemptive sacrifice, no imp dispel here. Let's see what they can get. Infernos are being called in. They get the Ring of Frost. Raikou has great control right now, but Chaz is in cross crack control. Triple DR in cast for them. Do they have oh. anything more? They actually get the ice block here as well. So excellent start here for Exit, getting two big cooldowns. Get actually exiting the ice block a little bit early there, but this doesn't matter. Clyde with a big <laughs> heal with that divine favor is going to be able to stabilize him for now. Well, he actually sacrificed as well. So Clyde traded out the sacrifice, overlapped with the ice lock, cauterize already used. And you can see, I mean, this is what I was talking about. Gelu, when he's in trouble, his instinct is to run into the room to try to hide. But guess what happens when you go into the room? Mercy can't help you out. And Gelu might just get blasted on Black Rook Hold. He gets taken down to 10% health and topped off. Clyde panics. 
the oil. And not really a panic, he kind of had to in that situation. Divine Shield, Blessing of Protection, almost everything traded out. He's going to need to get those Ineffable Truth procs uh, in order to get those cooldowns rotated back up. Otherwise, I really worry for Gelu, because like I was saying, Gelu, when he pulls into the room, Mercy, it's really difficult for him to actually get up the crowd control he needs and the damage he needs as well. And That's you it, can I tell think. this smaller map, this smaller map is not working out for them. Oh, they almost get crowd control on Clyde. All they have to do is land a polymorph on Clyde. It's gonna be game over. There's the Imp polymorph. Oh, imp dispel! So unfortunate here for X set. One crowd control away from finding victory. Now they're getting intercepted on their push. Waz retreats out of the room, paralyzes Gelu, stalls out the crowd control, and totally shuts down Diabolus on their counter assault. Now pushing forward over on top of Raikou, or on top of Gelu, is dressed to get the available, but Chaz is in a polymorph. They're gonna get punished on their push. Waz trades Fort Brew to push on in through the pain. They're gonna polymorph him. They know they can't kill through the Fort Brew. Try and buy time for Clyde to recover, but that's combustion pop by Raikou, really tearing into Gelu. Double Mortal Coil intercepts, and Nazoth once again saving Clyde's life here, resetting that sacrifice cooldown for him to trade during that combustion. However, now Touch of Death is coming up for Waz, and Busting Protection is still some time away, and there's no Gladiator's Medallion. x -Set are still in a commanding position. There's the Touch of Death. How is Clyde going to respond? He's three seconds away from an Avenging Wrath. Clyde activates Temporal Shield. Clyde's in the Dragon's Wrath. Temporal's over. Big hit connects onto Gelu. Any crowd control onto Clyde, they just can't find it. There's a Polymorph. Where's the Imp Singe? Do they have a Singe? He's locked down in a full Polymorph. Double stun punish here by Wasp. It's a Fury flying in game number two. One second away. Not enough damage to take down Gelu. Clyde goes in for a big heal. Stabilizing, but Waz is cleaving down both of them. Clyde needs to reposition away from the fight. If he doesn't get crowd controlled, though, Avenging Wrath should be enough to stabilize his team. Clyde's now pushing in. He's got Hammer of Justice. Chaz line of sights him. Raikou blinks to punish. He gets a Frost Nova cover on the Polymorph. I think the Singe hit the Frost Nova. Beautiful timing here by Raikou. Just a little bit more damage. Chaz moves in for the killing blow. X set with beautiful execution. Take game two. All right, tied up here in game number two. This is a best of five series. It is double elimination, but Xset tying it up now here on Black Root Hold. What was the main factor there behind their victory, Zico? Well, I think, I mean, the map obviously did a lot, but I don't know. I feel like they weren't actually pushing in for crowd control as much. They were just kind of sitting back and doing damage. And then when the target was already low, they tried to get like a paralyze uh, and I don't know. It felt like they had, you know, pressure start to finish. They got that early dressed, forced out the cauterize, and in the next setup, they got the ice block, which unfortunately was overlapped with some of Clyde's cooldowns. And uh, yeah, I think a few defensive overlaps from the Abelos and, uh, you know, the map, and also just uh, doing damage and trying to go for CC when you already have damage uh, was was big for X in this match. And of course, that Sheep Nova combo right there. Uh, to give uh, Raikou some protection for that uh, Imp Dispel uh, is what sealed the deal in the end. Yeah, I mean, we saw Gelu's Cauterize proc pretty early in that game. Was there even really a point that they recovered during that game on the side of Diabolus, Sid? Uh, at one point I was thinking maybe when the Sacrifice reset, but then Touch of Death came off cooldown, and Raikou's crowd control at the end of the game with Frost Nova covering the Polymorph. If he didn't do that, Clyde would have been dispelled out of that Polymorph. Gelu would have probably gone back to full HP, and even Chaz like rolled up and tossed in a, a Rising Sun Kick as well to just make sure there was enough damage. It was really all three members of X-Set guaranteeing victory off of Raikou's nice play. Okay, well, just as a reminder, I mean, last time these two teams played against each other was Diabolus. That was the victor here. But now it kind of looks like maybe Xset has an answer to this team here. What do we expect then, then Diabolus to respond with? Do we think that they're going to continue playing this same composition? Or is there something else they have to switch up? Uh, I, so in my opinion, Diabolus won't switch ever. They're going to play Mage Lock Paladin the entire series. I think the big thing we're going to see is just different maps. So uh, I think likely Ashermane's Fall or Tolveron Arena will get locked in next. And I mean, the good thing for Diabolus in this matchup and this series is that they actually did win on the ground. So if we do go to a game five, it will be to their map advantage. Um, so they just need to make sure that they're not fumbling on the, the big maps. Uh, that said, for X set, if they want to win this series, they need to win on one of these big maps. If they can win here on Tolveron, that would be great. It's going to be a definitely a really difficult thing. Another thing that we kind of, I, or I noticed about that last game, was Raikou actually, he switched his race uh, over to a dwarf. So I think a lot of Diabolus uh, is pressure that comes from when they coordinate their claw, their obsidian claw, that two minute trinket, puts out a lot of burst damage. And when you have three of those, 
uh, it does an insane amount of damage. So what ends up happening is if Chaz is playing Relentless, he gets caught in any crowd control. Galu, Clyde, Mercy, they all just throw their claws and Raikou can't really do anything about it. As a human, now as a dwarf, he can just use his dwarf racial, uh, the stone form, the dark iron uh, dwarf, um, fire blood racial, and that just removes all of those. So I think Raikou, really, really intelligent decision by him because I think for Diablos, that's a huge part of their win condition. If he can just completely negate that, uh, I think things are going to be looking better and better for Xset. All right, here, about 10 seconds left. Xset choosing their composition, going with that same one from game Ooh. one and two. Now Diabolus here to choose their comp. What do we want to see in terms of their strategy, their positioning, Zico? Uh, well, more what we saw on the Nagran game where they were kind of just staying back, trying to do counter plays. Xset pushes in. Mercy tries to get some fears, tries to maybe get a big Chaos Bolt on someone. And then as soon as uh, they've stopped the setup, they swap side again and force Exit to run all across the map again to do it uh, again. And that way, they're buying themselves a lot of time for Clyde to get his ineffable procs, to get his sacrifice back, and to rotate those cooldowns they, they, the way they did in game number one. And potentially, they can uh, get a win that way, and like late into the game. Yeah, and, and the first game went pretty long, too. And game number two was only not even five minutes long, I think. So do do we think that since we're here on a pretty big map, we're going to see more dampening for this game? Definitely. I feel like Mage Lock holds the record on Tolveron for the highest dampening <laughs> scene. It's, it's, I mean, there's a reason they want it is because they want to go into deep dampening. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what Xset's strategy is going to be because oftentimes when you're facing a destruction warlock on a map like this, you just wait at the pillar. Uh, and then make sure you've got mana and cooldowns so you in a dampening, maybe do a Warlock push with the Tiger Eye Brew. That's what they tried to do on the Grand. If they were in a more stable position, maybe they could have pulled that off. One thing I'm interested to see is if Gelu knows that Xset want to do that, he could uh, run like a Flame Strike build and kind of just cleave the pillar a bit, and that would punish Xset's opportunities to try and sit back and sort of wait for an, a moment deeper into dampening. It's so hard to find that window though, where you, when you're trying to push through a Paladin's cooldowns because Ineffable Truth could reset them at almost any moment. So you, you work through, you get a sacrifice. You're like, okay, sacrifice out of the way. Push in, you get crowd control. Okay, we got blessing and protection. And then you're like, you're ready to go. You're like, okay, we're gonna win. Oh, sacrifice got reset. We got to do it again. So on Tolveron, you've got so much distance to close while that's happening. It makes it very easy for the mage lock to just dismantle you. So in my mind, this is going to be the hardest game for Xset in the series. All right. Well, we got game number three live on Tolver Arena. Xset versus Diablos. And uh, it, oh, Gaelus playing Mecha Gnome now. So that's why they lost. He realized that. Yep. He's not. But actually, he's, he's not. not. He's human. No. He looked like a Mecha Gnome there for a second. It's the backpack. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're going to push in here. And this is kind of a stalemate situation. Like Exit, they don't want to leave the pillar. Abos, they don't really want to push in. But at this point, as the mage lock, you're basically forced to push in. So they're going to do that. Let's see what they can get done here. Raikou gets a polymorph onto Gelu, immediately stopping the mage lock setup. And uh, Mercy is looking for some crowd control into Chas. He gets a fear. He gets another fear. But no polish by Gelu just yet. There it is, full poly secured into a ring of frost. It looks like they're gonna set up onto Chaz here potentially. Whereas realizing that trying to break up the crowd control allows Chaz to get out of there. And now once again, Exa, they, they wanna play the long game here. They just don't wanna take many risks. They wanna play the pillar game, go hit whatever is closest to the pillar. And then if no, nothing is too close, then they're just gonna pull back here. Uh, but it looks like they actually are going for a setup here. Ooh, dress comes out, big damage. Clyde just trinket sacrifices right away here. They don't want to have that disastrous opener with the uh, cauterized proking again. So uh, a nice trade there by Clyde. And uh, looks like Xset are going to net themselves a cooldown at least. Yeah, and we'll just pay attention to Gelu's positioning. The entire game, he should just be running away from Raikou, running away from Chaz, and running them through the gauntlet that is Mercy. Uh, let's see if he does it. Greater Power Blast being channeled out right now. Let's see. And I, I just think... As long as that Drustic Gap Trinket isn't up or was, Gil is going to be feeling relatively safe that he's not just going to get absolutely blown out of the water. Chaz moving in to initiate crowd control. Gelu actually getting preemptively bopped. Clyde just throwing out his cooldowns. He realizes he's going to be able to rotate 
uh, through a lot in the match. And uh, I think if he just trades out the sacrifice, his trinket, a blessing of protections, kind of preemptively, it's going to allow Gelu to play a little bit more confidently and get more pressure in the match. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Full polymorph secured now onto Chaz. Waz on the run. Diffuse magic immediately. Caught into a hammer of justice, but out of line of sight. I think Xset's going to be able to hold on with uh, minimal defensive cooldown usage. Oh, swap to Chaz. Greater Pyro in the sky, but he's at the pillar. Now a, a turnaround on the Gelu. Huge hit of damage. That's the Cotters. That's the block. Man, that's exactly what X set needed here because Ineffable Truth not going to reset that five minute Cauterize and not going to reset that four minute Ice Block. And they're still getting the cooldowns from the Paladin despite being this most difficult map for them. Even Raikou landing in a cheeky counter spell. Not able to capitalize too much to take Gelu down. Big Divine Favor. Gelu goes back to full health. Raikou's trying to control up. Gelu blinks in. They're trying to turn it around on the Waz. He's stuck out in midfield, getting blasted by a Meteor and a Chaos Bolt. One second left on the Hammer. Pops out, ports back. Chaz still in a poly, but Waz looks like he's going to recover with some Vivifies. Oh, full fear. Greater Pyro swap over to Chaz. Gelu all over the map right now. Trying to go after anybody in line of sight. Chaz dips around the corner. Waz charges back in. Gets Conflagrate rooted on his Flying Serpent kick and feared away. Like that interception from Mercy. I gotta say, Mercy plays a solid defense in this matchup. It's very important because as a Destruction Warlock, you've got Dark Soul and Infernals. It's really your only time to be a big threat. If the other team just runs away from them, you get no value. And Mercy is finding really good timings with those cooldowns. He's once again going to need to, but he doesn't have them for 30 more seconds. And... I do suppose Clyde's got Divine Shield and Sacrifice, but he may need to trade it right now, and he does immediately on the Combustion, going one for one on the cooldowns. But now, Touch of Death. This is the same situation we saw in Game 2 that Xset were able to pull off victory, so what needs to happen? Raikou needs a Frost Nova Polymorph on Clyde. The Imp needs to singe the Frost Nova and not the Polymorph. Waz needs to connect to Gelu, and if all of these can happen at the same time, I think that Xset could pull off a victory here very soon. I actually think they could ring the imp away because uh, it's so far away right now. That they might actually be able to just. Uh, there it is. Ooh, they get the paralyzed, but he trinkets immediately, pops the wings. He gets a leg sweep here, and he does get the vitality conduit with that trinket. So Clyde once again shutting down the attempt, and now you can see the Ablos are just going to try to pull back here. But if they can get some more, if they can stay in on the side of Exit here for just a little bit more, get a new poly DR and actually go again. I think they can kill Gelu here because they didn't actually commit their damage. And Waz is going to have a leg sweep coming up in about three seconds. So he's going to go ahead and use that. And that could be enough to seal the deal here. Let's see what they can get done. Right, he's going for the Polymorph. There it is. But he gets polyed midway. And there is an Imp as well standing right next to Mercy. So I don't think Rekka's going to be able to uh, do what he wants to do in this situation. There it is. Leg sweep, Fist of Fury, Paralyzed. He's going to be the crowd control into a sheep potentially. But he gets counterspelled on it. Cloud is going to come out of that and top off Gelu here no problem and at this point if you're an X set I don't think you can really do too much here you have a leg sweep onto Chaz but you don't really have any real lockdown here for Gelu. Yeah Raikou just resetting that combustion as fast as he can it is available so that's when the big gamut is going to be available was right now taking a combustion hit from Gelu is going to be the life cocoon trades out from Chaz to keep him alive and healthy and now you can tell Xset, they want to continue this pressure onto Gelu. They kind of have him in a check situation. They might be able to just close it out right now. Ooh. Gelu gets hit by a huge Drastigath, and that's it. Xset is on fire right now, and this is exactly what they needed. They had to win on the, sw the, win on the swing match, and now to Ablis, they are in a lot of trouble because these games are looking worse and worse for them. Xset is definitely picking up momentum. Yeah, this is not looking good for Diablos right now. Are losing their own map choice. Xset now up 2-1 in this best of five series here. And it uh, just, it's, it. What, let's talk, let's break down that last game, Zico. What exactly went wrong on the side of Diablos? Why couldn't they win the game on a large map that favors that composition? I'm not sure. I, I don't know if the full uh, haste that Vegeta is running is actually the move here. Because I feel like, He's taking so much damage. Like these setups, just one paralyze into a leg sweep with a dress. It's not really anything anyone can do about it uh, when you get those setups. But of course, here in the end, it was the same thing again. Raikou with the polymorph with the uh, Nova covering it there. Uh, and they had the dress to have to back it up. But I feel like if you have an, a little bit of Versa in those situations, yeah, it's just going to do so much for it if you're playing Conflict and you got uh, some Versa. I think. You know, as big of a fan as I am of the of the haste build that Gelu's running, I actually think it should be the other way around. I think Riker should be the one running the haste, and Gelu should yeah. be the one running the Bursa. 
Yeah, and if you guys want to see what they're running, awc.gcd.tv, or you can click the bottom bar down below this video and see what exactly these guys are running in terms of gear, um, race, corruption, all of that good stuff. What about you, Ven? What would you think? Uh, what do you think Gelu should be running, or, or Raiku even? I'm not sure. Um, I, I think. I think Gelo in this position, I mean, they're kind of just getting bullied. I feel like they have no choice but to kind of put on a little bit more versatility. The one thing I was thinking of is Gelo could also play Frost. I feel like Frost in this particular matchup might actually be better than Fire. Just because one of the one of the big problems for Gelo is if he goes full versatility, getting off Greater Power Boss is going to be extremely difficult. So actually getting off that significant damage is really, really challenging against what Xset is running. So if he goes Frost, not only is it going to be more difficult for Waz to get on target because he's going to be snared up the whole game, but also uh, we can see Gelu kind of take advantage of a full versatility build, um, play a really defensive talent so he's not just getting all in and one shot by these dressing ass. Uh, I think it's really, really important. So that is an adaptation I think they could make, but I don't know how confident they are with that particular um, specialization right now into this matchup, so maybe they won't do it. Yeah, and, and you know, as we know, Gelu is certainly more comfortable on that Fire Mage. He's kind of known for the Fire Mage. Do you think that that would be? I, I mean, like in in this type of play, the top four when the pressure is like really on for these teams, Super is, is making a move like that risky. Like, how do you choose between the comfort pick or something that might be a little bit better for the matchup? I feel like they've got a lot of practices fire and Destro, and they like to play aggressive. And I think that's the reason why Raikou is still running full versatility as opposed to running haste in this matchup, because I feel like Diabolus would be a mage lock that would isolate him and burst him down if he started putting on Expedient. So Raikou is just playing safe, uh, more or less, and usually safe is a good answer. Rely on the other team to make mistakes and then capitalize on those and find victory. Usually the aggressor is at a bit of a disadvantage, um, but Gelu still has the option to drop some. He's actually just turning a 180 and going to a small map, so what are their plans with this on a small map? A monk killing composition? What do they have as a monk killing composition that's running conflict? Rogue like Mage Paladin, maybe? Oh, wait, no. That, that's, their, that's the only Jamie thing, Rogue? right? That's, it would have to be Jamie Rogue. That's the only thing that makes sense right now. Nothing else makes sense. It has to be Mage Rogue with Jamie Rogue. What about Fire they, Alley? Yeah. Fire Alley and they this... kill Chaz? The conflict I'm not sure. Chaz? I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> if they don't pick Jamie on Rogue with this map pick, I think they're throwing. But also mm. picking Jamie on Rogue, are they ready? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like I would be blown away if we see Jamie coming on Rogue. I think Mage Ellie is a lot more likely in this particular matchup and try to just go after Chaz if he's playing Relentless. Uh, I think if that is the case, if Chaz uh, kind of realizes that, he should 100% play Gladiator's Medallion because it's going to be... One thing Diablos really does well is they exploit the Obsidian Claw Trinket. Three Claws is a lot of burst with their composition. I think people don't give it the full respect they need to, and I think that's why Game 1 looks so different than Game 2, Game 3. Uh, but they're going to lock in Mage. Mist I can't believe this, honestly. I can't believe that. I, I feel like they're giving up their biggest advantage, which is the big map, but... Maybe they do want to play more aggressive. I mean, we talked about Diablos being a really, really aggressive Mage Lock Paladin, and maybe they realize they're playing a little bit too scared in the match, but I'm really not sure. I, I, I feel like this is not setting themselves up for success, but we'll see what they have in mind. What do we, what do we expect in terms of positioning then here on the side of Diablos, given that they've locked in hook point, and now we're seeing them play, play Mage Lock Zika? Well, uh, we are expecting a swift win for Exet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Unless they have a big surprise, unless they're changing up their gearing, or I don't know, they're doing something. I mean, obviously anything could be possible here. They could, maybe they're all going gushing, or they're changing up talents on Clyde to play more aggressive, like maybe they're playing Blinding Light or something. I really don't know uh, what their <laughs> ideas are here. You think they're going to spite um, Chaz? May, yeah, maybe they're playing Spite, but I think if they are playing Spite, Waz has ride the wind, and both of them could play Tiger's Lust as well. So uh, I don't know. They they have you know ways of dealing with that. So uh, I'm not oh, sure. They was, obviously, they have something uh, cooking up here. Otherwise, they wouldn't do this. But I, I can't figure out what it is. <sighs> stumped. You guys are stumped. 
We're stunned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I. It sounds like Zico thinks Xset's gonna win. Ven, Supertease, do we feel like Diabolus has a chance here? I mean, they've got to have some sort of plan. Aggression. I mean, that's the only thing, right? Like an aggressive mage mm-hmm. lock. Normally, that's not. Where I mean, Mage Lock is a good comp all around, obviously, but where we yeah. see it win is by defense, drag the game into 80% dampening. So picking the strategy to play aggressive with it on a small map doesn't really make sense based on its track record. So, I mean, it could work. I could see it work. I think Spite actually would be maybe their way of finding victory here, and they can take hook point away from Exit on a game five with that. I would love it. Honestly, if they are running Spite, I would love to see Waz. If if they run Spite and Waz picks uh, Ride the Wind, I would be really, really impressed with that like that level of uh, prediction uh, coming in from both these teams. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a dynamic there. We'll see what Gelu runs. I think he could actually play a different build too if he wanted to. Um, I don't know, maybe just go more versatility, don't really focus on the greater power blast, just focus on combustions. That's very untraditional as Mage Lock, but on the smaller map, he might need it. Like, I don't know if he's going to be able to actually get off those greater power blasts, and I think if he tries to just go toe-to-toe um, with Xset's composition and push in and get crowd control, uh, it's likely he gets punished quite a bit. So we'll see what they come up with. Diablo's definitely in a really difficult spot here, though. Yeah, we'll have to see if Hook Point is the right choice for Diabolus or is X set gonna win this series three to one. All right, both teams posting up here. Mercy gets his demonic gateway. Gelu is charging in invisible right now on top of Chaz. How are they gonna start out? Are they gonna attack Chaz? Polymorph him, looks like a polymorph. Chaz ports the polymorph. Beautiful placement of that portal by Chaz. He's now behind the fence. Clyde is chasing him down. How's he going to avoid Clyde? He can't. Blinding light. Are they playing Spite? Oh, they are. There it is. The Spites are coming down. He's feared in it. They need a hammer of justice. They polymorph on top of it. Chaz's corruption is beginning to stack. They're actually going after Clyde, maybe, trying to punish this. But Chaz is really overloaded right now. He trinket life cocoons immediately during that Spite. And is Ride the Wind down there for Waz? It's hard to see with all the different animations, but I'm trying to double check his talents here. I don't so. updates. I don't think they have Ride the Wind, so an all-in spite could be a way for Diabolus to steal away hook point from X set, but now they're being punished! Whoa! Huge pushback on the Gelu. Massive damage there onto Gelu. So both teams playing extremely aggressive. Kind of what we, what we predicted here. Mercy summoning the Imp. Gelu still extremely low on HP. Clyde in a triple DR sheep. Do we have any more CC for him? Gelu trying to uh, stop Waz here from just killing him right away. And he gets recovered there from that situation. But still, they, those spites are coming off cooldown. And you can see Mercy, he has a succubus up right now chasing Chaz. He's trying to seduce Chaz into a spite. And that is not as fun as it sounds. Let's see if they can get that set up. Right now, they get a sheep on the gallery. Raikou knows what's about to happen. Mercy is pushing in here. Chaz, he knows exactly what they want here. He knows he just got to stay away from anybody who can lock him down. If he gets feared into a sheep, if he gets sheeped into a fear, anything like that could just be the mm. game. And now, once again, Mercy, though, taking a little bit of damage here. Waz as well getting greater pyro. Right, because he's getting controlled up, and now Clyde's pushing in. Do they have the blinding light? He gets Dragon's Breath, but he gets they're... sheep on the Dragon's Breath here. I don't think they're going to go for it until Obsidian Claws up. I think just because every man for himself has a three-minute cooldown, and Chaz is playing Relentless, this is exactly what I was talking about. Gallo, Mercy, and Clyde, they're going to triple Spite and triple Claw. And I think Chaz, there's not going to be too much he can do about it. So, unfortunately, I feel like he really made an error here. Uh, going relentless in this matchup, and I think Diablos is going to be looking to punish that perfectly. And at some point, they're going to push in very, very soon, and Chaz has about a minute left on his every man for himself, and unless he can make it to that point, right now, I'm right really now. afraid for Chaz. Oh, what? Clyde tried to bait a life cocoon oh. there. He baits the port. Chaz ports on top of Clyde. Clyde, where's the blind? There's the blind. He pre forpers I don't think forper is enough. It's going to oh, last crane. way too long. Crane! Oh, does it, it makes you immune to slows. Is it, gonna, does yep. it actually immune you to spike, yep. too? Yep. Oh, they're so sad. Wave of the Crane yes, actually was useful. I feel like I haven't seen Wave of the Crane actually be useful in a really long time, but Jazz will survive with that clutch timing. So they go Wave of the Crane instead of Ride the Wind. Why? <laughs> that is my question, but Jazz is clutch with that Wave of the Crane, making the Spite not stack up. 
And uh, he's gonna have every man for himself again for that next scary moment. And now Mercy is the one on the back foot. Nice Vitality Conduit coming out, right? He's getting a sheep here. Gets stopped on the re with that Ring of Frost. Gelo now loading up a Greater Pyroblast. And I think Gelo actually is running a bunch of Bursa because his Greater Pyroblast is... It's not that fast if you compare it to the previous games here. So a lot of adaptations here coming out from Diablos. Yeah, uh, I think it's smart. I mean, they're just going to be going for consistency in the match. Mana's not looking too bad. Chaz is pre-healing himself quite a bit in the matchup. And every single one of these spike goes is going to be scary. I mean, just because it hasn't worked out yet doesn't mean it won't eventually work out. All you need is one good attempt. And they've got time with the way this matchup's playing out. Maybe. Dragon's Breath on the Clyde. Clyde still has a lot of cooldowns he can ro rotate through and is going to be the Divine Favor with the Sacrifice, with the Avenging Wrath. Mercy goes straight to full health. And Chaz is running once again. And actually, you do get the um, the Way of the Crane with Conflict and Strife. It's the extra honor talent you get. So as long as you're playing that Conflict and Strife, you have that ability. And I didn't even know you could use it to counter Spite. So definitely a really interesting choice. Oh. They've got Chaz locked down in crowd control. They've isolated Raikou with no ice block, but they're not finding too much damage. They've still got Chaz and a polymorph. Gelly tries to find a greater pyro, gets polymorphed on it. Nice shutdown. Waz tearing into Mercy. Clyde stunned up. Gelly and a poly. Three versus one. I don't know if on ending resolve will be enough here. Huge pressure out. Clyde has to divine shield on top of the nether ward with a vitality conduit. That's going to be enough. Mercy survives, but unending resolve was the main point of damage done to Diabolus in that assault. Huge push by Waz there. Chaz repositioning far away. Gelu blinks in, gets paralyzed by Chaz, punished on the blink. Nicely done by Chaz. Repositioning. Raikou getting blasted. Greater Pyro is going to finish onto Raikou. Waz feared away. Chaz is ready for it. Clyde's pushing in. Just laying down a judgment. Trying to reset. Wait for his Hammer of Justice. And this blinding light, are they going to go after Chaz? It seems like now they've got to reassess how they want to go about this. If Way of the Crane is going to be able to counter, their crowd control needs to be perfect. Chaz dodges Gelu's Blink Dragon's Breath, but gets caught Ooh. by a Ring of Frost. And they're going to spite on the Ring of Frost. They need perfect crowd control, but... Oh, they've got the crowd control so far. Clyde gets a Hammer of Justice before the Way of the Crane. How much corruption did they overload him? Chaz life cocoons, ports out of the spite. Looks like he's going to survive. No every man for himself, no Way of the Crane. That's more than a fair trade for Chaz. Uh, I think he actually did use every man for himself. I think he used it, yeah. stun. Uh, so he's not going to have that available. And uh, the, the thing about uh, about the the way of the crane, doesn't it cost like literally 25% of your mana to, to use? That's why it's a it's little like bit surprising. Yeah. It's a bit expensive. Oh, nice preemptive sacrifice there by Clyde onto Mercy there right before he got crowd control. Clyde with these preemptive plays have been uh, an all-star for this roster. And it looks like uh, he's going to have his uh, bubble and his sacrifice that he just used coming back up here in about 18 seconds. So if you are Diablos, you are definitely happy right now. He's is doing a lot of work for you. And uh, right there, the Imp actually dispelled the Sheep instead of the Frost Nova. So Exit losing the 50-50 uh, should give Clyde enough time here to get a big heal here with that Divine Favor onto Mercy. And now they're looking to set up the next Spite. And I, I, I'm not sure. Gelu is running full Versa, which we, let's be honest, criticize him for not running but i don't think he can dragon's breath sheep chas here uh, to, to try to stop the way of the crane from being used and chas actually preemptively just used the way of the crane right there so there is a big opening right now for diablos they have about 40 seconds to get on top of chas press blinding lights triple spite him get a fear a sheep something and then take him down let's see if they can do it or if mercy is gonna fall well, and definitely have to wait and see. Gelo right now caught into a polymorph. Chaz with beautiful positioning in this game. 12% dampening. And as this game gets, goes on, it's going to be more and more difficult for Clyde to actually heal Mercy up. So Chaz, he's just buying oh. as much time as he can. There's quite some time, though, uh, for them to make a play with the spite. Uh, probably another minute and a half or something like that. Clyde still in crowd control. Mercy getting a little bit low, but good kills coming in from Gelu with the polymorphs. Slowing down Waz and just slowing down the game as they look to get their one shot combo off onto Chaz and that's the thing what they're trying to do is very predictable Chaz actually ports away he gets rooted can Clyde get there for the blinding light if he can get the blind it's gonna be massive he gets the blinding light can they get the spite one spite two, two. spite three spite ring of frost by Gelu he gets knocked away and it gets denied the hammer of justice does land Gelu gonna be ripping out his combustion more than likely Chaz can you hold on and it looks like he will be able to hold on the ring of peace from Waz stopping the polymorph MVP plays, and that is the only reason why Chaz is still alive. That was the Dark Soul, so there's really no threat for Diabolus. If I'm X-Set, I feel like 
you just start going crazy after Mercy at this point in the game, trying to overwhelm them. Chaz did spend quite a lot of mana, though. That could be a bit of a problem. Gelly channeling out greater pyros on Waz. He rolls around the corner, but the pyro's already in the sky. Clyde in a polymorph. Raku sets up with the Frost Nova. No Singe magic used or even attempted here. Blessing Protection activated preemptively, but now it's over. Mercy reconnected by Waz. Chaz rolls up for a leg sweep. Beautiful crowd control chain here. Big Drastigat drop. Mercy barely holding on here on match points. Almost being sent down to the lower bracket, but Vitality Conduit comes in clutch from Clyde and recovers. Diable is still banking on a dream oh. right now. They're getting in position, looking to spite Grenade Chaz and the Polymorph. Two spites down, they need perfect crowd control. Clyde gets intercepted and he oh. gets denied. Chaz ports away with one second before Clyde could connect it. Now Divine Shield's on cooldown. Mercy is in a lot of trouble and Xset are looking to close out this series. Wow, that was so nice. Chaz getting the port right there. Clyde even bubbled to secure that Hammer of Justice and he still didn't get it. Chaz no every man for himself there, so he could have gone down there very, very easily, but it looks like he's gonna hold on long enough to be able to use that. The spites were just committed, so he's gonna have all the time in the world and now Mercy is in a world of trouble here, taking so much damage in that leg sweep. Clyde still has a decent amount of mana, still has uh, his Avenging Wrath active right now that he's healing him up with, but once that Avenging Wrath comes out, uh, I mean, they're gonna have to get a trinket sacrifice, but yeah, it, I mean, aside from that, it doesn't really look like they have a lot of cooldowns to work with on the side of Diablos, and they don't really have offensive pressure right now, which is the biggest thing. Gelu, there it is, sheep coming out, two spikes. Can we see a third here? Clyde is in crowd control, he's gonna deny the third spike. Gelu going for the last sheep here. Clyde needs to get there in time, to get the hammer of justice, but Raikou oh. is slowing him down beautifully. They finally connected. Does he have a trinket for it? Will he use it? That's the question. There's the one on foil. And there is the life cocoon right there. I'm not sure. How, I saw like a trinket animation there, but I'm not sure if he trinketed into uh, the mortal coil and got the life cocoon between there or what happened. But Chaz hangs on another attempt. Oh, Clyde yeah, stunned up. The, oh, let's see what they can do. Unfortunately, the polymorphs diminishing return the mortal coil, so not going to get too much uh, die. I don't even think he ended up using it. Mercy getting really, really low. Once again, getting interrupted and still a minute left on that unending resolve. Clyde, he does have the sacrifice. He does have his trinket. Avenging Wrath, 33% dampening in the game. Mana relatively even. And I don't think Diablos is completely out of this yet. I mean, Xset, they're looking good. They're looking solid. They've done a great job. Chaz in particular, fantastic job surviving these setups. But Diablos still has opportunities as this game goes on. Dampening makes the game very unpredictable. Anyone's match here. Mana is starting to get taxed on both sides with the pressure and stress is really on Diabolus. They need to win two in a row if they want to stay in this upper bracket. If they could best X set in the first round, that would be excellent for their overall tournament performance. Chaz gets caught in a polymorph. Three spites are down. They need perfect crowd control. Raikou intercepts with a polymorph. Ch Clyde breaks out for a double blinding light. And Chaz, he's almost going to be completely overwhelmed on corruption. Diabolus could walk away with it. Chaz gets Life Cocoon activated. They're trying to cut through it in deep dampening. Can they? They break the cocoon, but Chaz gets into the distance. He's going to be fine now. Mercy in a ton of trouble. Clyde stunned up. He can't trade sacrifice for one more moment. Mercy on 30. 30%. Dragon's with on Clyde, trying to get a little bit more crowd control, but it's not enough. Avenging Wrath is up. Big heals come in from Clyde. He can sacrifice if he needs to on any result. That's not enough! And they throw in the final moments. They had sacrifice available. X set closes it out. Chaz is not going to be caught off guard. What? Why didn't he use it? He had sacrificed for such a long time. Maybe it just rotated back up so quickly he didn't even realize. He couldn't believe that it was available, but... They traded so much. He actually got a beautiful preemptive vitality conduit. And out of that, if he had just used the sacrifice, it still would have had unending resolve. I mean, that is super unfortunate. Uh, Xset, they will.